So this is chapter six. Fluid friction and steady one-dimensional flow. Now in chapter five of fluid mechanics for chemical engineers, uh, the whole chapter covered Bernoulli's equation. And you're looking at a form of it right here, where P1 is representing the pressure, rho is representing the density, G acceleration, V uh, volume, uh, Z is representing the height. So we have P1 over PG plus V sub 1 squared over 2G plus Z sub 1 is equal to P sub 2 over rho G plus V squared sub 2 over 2G plus Z sub 2 is equal to some constant. We see here in this uh, diagram we have some fluid flowing when you apply pressure to it, fluid of course is going to move to the right more. But what also happens is that while this pressure becomes greater, this pressure also becomes greater. Even though the fluid is moving, it's not because there's less pressure. There's more pressure over here, but the pressure is 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 becoming just as great on the other end to help slow down and equal this type of pressure on the other side of the tube. And that's what Bernoulli's equation is stating. And there's a working form of Bernoulli's equation that's important for this chapter. I will write it out for you. That was not correct. So this is the change in the pressure over the density plus acceleration times the height plus volume squared over 2 is equal to the change in work, derivative of work, non-force, over the change in mass minus the friction, friction heat per pound mass. And this is applied to problems in which we could set the friction term, this term here, the friction term right here, uh, equal to zero. 
this chapter we show how to evaluate the term for the very important and practical case of steady flow in one dimension as in a pipe duct or channel using the friction terms we evaluate here sorry about that using the friction terms evaluated here uh, we can use this equation uh, for a much wider range of problems than those we have considered so far including many problems of great practical interest to chemical engineers keep in mind that our main reason for evaluating friction term is to put the proper relation for the friction term into this equation here and then solve the resulting equation for the appropriate pressures velocities uh, evaluations elevations rather pipe diameters and etc uh, the form of the friction loss term is strongly dependent on the geometry of the system the problem is much simpler if the flow is all in one direction as in a pipe rather than in two or three dimensions as around an airplane therefore we will first consider fluid friction in long constant diameter pipes and steady flow this case is of great sorry is of great uh, practical significance and is the easiest case to treat mathematically uh, starting and stopping of flow in pipes will be just discussed in the next chapter um, in section 6.13 which is at the end of this chapter uh, we will consider the frictional drag on particles and steady rectilinear motion rectilinear motion which although it is two-dimensional gives results quite similar to those found in long straight pipes quite amazing when you think about it uh, in part four of this chapter, we will investigate two and three dimensional flows by using some of the ideas from this chapter and introducing several others. So section one is labeled the pressure drop experiment. And the classic pressure drop experiment to determine the, the friction term is performed on an apparatus. Um, and usually these apparatuses can be kind of funny looking um, so you see here uh, this figure which is an apparatus for the pressure drop experiment like I was talking about uh, in this experiment we set the volumetric flow rate of the fluid with the flow regulating valve here is the flow regulating valve right here uh, we measure the volumetric flow rate with the tank or bucket on the scale and a stopwatch. At steady state, we read pressure gauges P1 and P2 and record their difference. Usually, we are interested in pressure drop per unit length, so we divide by the pressure drop by distance delta x and plot p sub 1 minus p sub 2 over delta x against volume flow rate q regardless of what the Newtonian liquid is flowing or what kind of pipe we use the result is always of the form shown in figure 6.2 and for all gases at low velocities the result is the same as that shown Features of some features of uh, one specific fluid flowing in one specific pipe is that at low flow rates, the pressure drop per unit length is proportional to the volumetric flow rate to the one power. Number two, at high flow rates, the pressure drop per unit length is pr proportional to the volumetric flow rate raised to a power that varies from 1.8 for a very smooth pipe sorry to 2.0 for very rough pipes at intermediate flow rates there is a region where the experimental results are not easily produced the two curves for the other two regions are shown dotted extrapolated into this region 
the flow can oscillate back and forth between these two curves and take up values between them. If the experimental apparatus is like that in this figure, with a more or less constant value of dp over dx, p being pressure, then the volumetric flow rate will, will oscillate horizontally between the two curves, producing an irregular pulsing flow. This is fairly blurry, but this is a graph of pressure gradient being on the y-axis and on the left axis, the x-axis, is the volumetric flow. So we have pressure versus volumetric flow rate. And this is useful in pressure drop experiments. Down here, this is where negative dp over dx is proportional to q to the 1 power. And there's sort of an unstable region where negative dp dx uh, oscillates between upper and lower curves. Um, and then we have a region up here where negative dp over dx is proportional to q to the 1.8 or very rough or very smooth pipe rather to 2.0, which is for um, a very smooth pipe, or very rough pipe. So 1.8 power for a very rough pipe, 1.8 power for a very smooth pipe, and 2.0 for a very rough pipe. Did I get that right? Okay, I got that right. 1.8 power for a very smooth pipe, 2.0 for a very rough pipe. Sorry, I kept on messing that up. But the main theory here, the main concept, is that down here, negative dp over dx is proportional to q to 1 power. Here, it depends. It's between 1. It's between 1.8. It varies in between the two levels. And then on the high end, negative dp over dx is proportional to q to either 1.8, 1.9, or 2 power. The experiment with the uh, the apparatus um, is relatively easy to run, and curves have been found for many combinations of pipe and fluid. However, since all possible combinations have not been tested, uh, it would be convenient to have some way of calculating the results of a new combination without having to test it. Uh, furthermore, no inquisitive mind will be satisfied with figure 6-2, um, this figure here. Um, without asking why it has three regions so different from each other. Um, we've already gone through about 13 minutes, so I'll continue uh, my analysis on this chapter in another video. So, see you in the next video.